Good evening, everybody. Welcome to tonight's meeting of, pardon me, January 18th. Uh, it is now 6.02 p.m. Uh, quorum being present. We will begin tonight's meeting. I'd like to call it to order. Um, as always, we will start with public comment. If you would like to make a comment, please raise your hand, use the hand raise function, um, and we will take it from there. Okay, Monty, can you unmute Toby, please? Toby, you've been unmuted. Uh, Toby Arsenian, 95 Granite Street. Um, this afternoon, I attended the meeting of the uh, Community Development Committee. Uh, one of the proposals before the committee on their agenda was an application for administrative funds uh, in the sum of $9,950 uh, for something called the Rockport Community Land Trust, uh, which apparently is in prospect but does not at present legally exist. And uh, the Community Preservation Committee, after some discussion and ignoring my comments and objections, uh, voted to give them the money. There was no written application for the sum of money, and the Rockport Community Land Trust is a prospect and a hope, not a, a legal fact. I ask you to find out from town council if that is a proper vote, whether that is legal. Uh, and I wish to read the board the letter that I wrote you, uh, both written and stamped on January 10th. I write to you to express my concerns about your plan to displace the Rockport Affordable Housing Trust Fund from the Code of Bylaws and replace it with a private not-for-profit trust not in the bylaws. When you last discussed this, perhaps a month ago, I asked you to research the alternatives before taking such actions. Look before you leap. There are two obvious alternatives, both preferable to your proposed trust. The first, spelled out in Chapter 7, Section E of the bylaws, is the currently inoperative but legally existing Affordable Housing Trust Fund. This was not dreamed up by former town administrator Linda Sanders. She took the form of it out of state law and tweaked it. She made two minor alterations at my request. How much more she altered the state's version, I do not know. In public comment period, I asked you to find out which other cities and towns have implemented the state's model and find out how this has worked out for them. I repeat my request that you get this information and make it available to the government and bylaw committee and to the public. The second alternative, which I again request that you investigate, is the use of one or more existing private affordable housing trusts to undertake the town's endeavors. Why reinvent the wheel when there are working models ready to hand? You need to find out if Action Incorporated, Harbor Light Community Partners, or Habitat for Humanity would be willing to undertake the town's affordable housing ventures, and if so, on what terms? It would be rash and grossly irresponsible to attempt to foist a new, hence untried, affordable housing venture on the voters without properly researching the possible alternatives. And, by the way, where do we stand with the housing needs assessment? Thank you for your attention to these matters. Oh, is that, are you all set, Toby? Any more? Thank you. Okay, no, no problem. Thank you very much. Um, just so people are aware tonight, as it pertains to what Toby, the, the, the majority of what Toby was talking about, um, item number H on the discussion items for the Affordable Hus Housing Trust Bylaw, um, because of what Toby said and after some communications, um, is going to be tabled for tonight. We are not going to discuss item H. Um, for exactly the reasons that, um, that Toby stated. We want to make sure we go into this the right way. Um, Sarah and um, Denise Donnelly really have been running point on this whole thing. So I think it would be um, it would behoove us to, to table this. Uh, and uh, speaking of Sarah, she has a family commitment and hopefully will be joining us later in the meeting. Uh, so I just wanted to make you folks aware of that. So thank you for that. Um, Monty, let's go next to Eric Hutchins, who has his hand up. Eric? Monty, can you unmute Eric? I'm trying. Thank you. Go ahead, thank Eric. You. You're all set. 
Yeah, uh, thank you. Eric Hutchins, 45 Pools Lane. Two brief comments and just a quick question. Uh, one is I'm just looking at the agenda this evening and seeing that there's a, uh, the green community charge is on there. Uh, hearing some comments at the last meeting that I attended um, and following what they've been doing for the past couple of years now, just want to say, I think the green community task force is doing more than I would have ever thought any committee was doing in this town. They're doing a fantastic job. And uh, I just want to give them those accolades for the uh, products and services they're doing for the town of Rockport and, and do everything to support them. Uh, the other comment I wanted to make briefly was uh, on your agenda this evening is uh, some bills for recycling dealing with the Department of Public Works uh, at the state legislature level. Legislature level. I'd certainly like to see Rockport support those uh, efforts to uh, increase recycling efforts statewide. We have been a leader off and on Commonwealth wide. I think everything we can do to continue that would be fantastic. And then my question just briefly is uh, dealing with the boardwalks down at Cape Hedge Beach. I'm just curious when the Board of Selectmen might expect to have a um, terms and conditions um, for public to review associated with how those would be licensed, since that's kind of a unique, maybe a unique situation over a beach property. Just curious what that schedule would be, and kind of curious what we would be charging them. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Eric. I appreciate it. Um, as far as what the what the agreement would look like, we we are not there yet um that's being worked on obviously we're going to vet through council um and go down that road and make sure that everything is in line um we need to figure out the fee structure and, and what have you so uh we're still working on that um but i appreciate the comments and of course we will let you know and we will bring it to the public um before we do anything so i thank you for the comments eric thank you uh, yep no problem um, Monty, do we have anybody else raising their hand or waving wildly in the screen? Yes. Jerry, you've been unmuted. I guess I wasn't waving wildly. I was just waving. Uh, anyhow, uh, I too would like to give my support to the green community under Tom Micas and the, and the, and the work that they've done in this community to bring up uh, uh, alternative uh, forms of energy to us with regard to charging stations, uh, uh, alter heat pumps that have been installed, that have saved money, different lighting that has been installed in the library, uh, proposed lighting that has been uh, is, is being proposed uh, for our streets. And uh, I think that organization has done a great job and I would hope that it maintains uh, the structure that, that currently exists and, and is allowed to move forward to do the things that need to be done for this community as far as as far as our future. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Appreciate it. Um, Monty, let's go to Laura Kozacek, please. Laura, you've been unmuted. Sorry. Um, let's see. Oh, thank you. I'm unmuted now. Sorry, I did a, a thing again on that. I also would like to speak about my appreciation for the Green Community Task Force and um, all of their work over the years and under um, the guidance of Tom Mikas as well. Um, I, I have to say they're, they're my go-to com committee or board, or board when I need a little um, uh, charge of something optimistic. They are in the unique position to look at all of the most fabulous things out there in the world, um, scientific uh, uh, discovery, technological improvements, you name it, they can entertain it and they can fine tune it if appropriate for use right here in our community. And every single thing they've done has saved Rockport from what I can understand, what I've noticed, hundreds of thousands of dollars. So uh, I, I think they're just, um, we all need um, the Green Community Task Force and they are our hip, go to go get it done group. And we all need to wholly support every single thing that they're doing as volunteers. They are not paid employees and they are doing Herculean things. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Laura, appreciate the comments. Um, and Christine Downing, let's go to her, Monty, please. Um, unmute. Uh, yep. Hang on one second. Sure. Um, okay. Oops. 
Thank you. Um, I, uh, I, I am not sure about, do you take comments later in the meeting or do you want them all here? It depends. I, I would prefer them here. What, you, what were you looking to speak on specifically, Christine? Um, I, I would like to, because I don't have a clear idea of what the um, uh, Green Community Task Force Committee charge is. I'm assuming that that is um, something to do with the scope of their responsibilities. Can you elaborate on that so that in the, the public comment section, section we could uh, respond to that? Sure, the Green Community Task Force is charged with looking for alternatives for the town, for energy alternatives for the town. It's pretty much as simple as that. And that's, I don't really know what else to say. Does that clarify it at all? Or would, um, would you like something further? Yes, a bit. Um, what is the purpose of its um, this position it has on the agenda tonight for a charge? Is because that we're, look, we're looking at making some adjustments to the charge. So it's not possible for me to really um, address that without hearing what the adjustments are. So uh, for, the, for, the, for the most part, I guess, correct. Um, so it would be um, helpful to have a, um, you know, public comments following that. Is that possible? There's a public comment period at the end of tonight's session. So you, I uh, welcome you to join in on that at the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Monty, let's go to Jenny Omri, please. Hi. Jenny, you've been unmuted. Thank you. Um, I'm a member of the Green Community Task Force. And um, so I'm not sure if I should be speaking now or later, but I'll just say briefly that um, I was at the last select board meeting and there was feedback given about more coordination with agencies and so forth at DPW. And I will share that Tom Mikas is a stellar chair of this committee. And he responded about being open to more coordination. We just received the draft within the hour and we've had no input into the process of um, what might be changed. And I respectfully ask, given that the select board in the last meeting was asking us to coordinate more um, with DPW, I don't understand how this was um, actually edited without any input from the Green Community Task Force members at all. So I respectfully ask that this be tabled, that the select board members table this discussion until we can have input from members of the task force. I um, serve on this committee as a volunteer, and I will say it is one of the most hardworking committees I've ever served on after more than 35 years of working in the nonprofit sector. So um, I respectfully ask you to table that motion and not proceed with it today without input from the Green Community Task Force. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, Monty, can we go to Diane Finch, please? Diane? Yes, hi. Um, yeah, I, I think I, Jenny said everything that I think, and she said it really well. But the other thing I wanted to say is, um, with all due respect to Don Campbell, um, you've made it clear that you do not find climate science to be a serious issue. You have said it publicly. You have said that, oh, it's been going on since the 1980s and not much is happening. Well, the Green Committee is the most committed group in this town, has raised $700,000 in grants to help move Rockport to be more green, to use less fossil fuels. They've done it politely. They have worked with DPW. Jim Gardner has been to our meetings. Um, I think that there is something that I'm not understanding. And I promote 100% what Jenny said, this should not be done tonight without having some discussion with the Green Community Task Force. We are so lucky to have a climate science engineer running that group, a very sincere and intelligent person who has already offered to work more closely with DPW. Um, again, I'm fairly new to Rockport, 
politics, but I haven't seen any other group do so much work for climate change. Um, so this is really shocking to me that this letter came within the last few hours. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. Uh, Monty, let's unmute Zenus if we can, please. Yeah, Ready? thanks. Z Seppel on 92 Granite Street. I just wanted to commend the selectmen on their listening session that they had with the Long Beach tenants there last week. Um, that was one of the better meetings that I've ever seen take place in Rockport. It seemed like the purpose of the meeting was to listen and not to comment. Uh, if you saw what I saw, I think there were about 32 people that were there, mostly, yeah, all because from Long Beach. And most of them uh, were in favor of finding some kind of uh, way to purchase the property and, and put it in their own private hands, which is fine. That's, you know, discussion item. I was a little bit disappointed when I heard two people accuse the uh, Long Beach Option Committee of having a bias uh, because they actually discussed a possibility of a future uh, environment necessitating letting the place go back to nature. Um, I think the fact that it's a possibility in the future uh, is something that has to be taken into account and discussing it doesn't necessarily mean it's biased to letting that happen. Just wanted to say overall, I thought that it was a good meeting, um, but that I think uh, that there were a couple of comments that just weren't uh, based in any fact. Thank you, that thank you, Zenas. I appreciate it. And thank you for the compliment. It means a lot. We we really honestly do appreciate it. So thank you for that. We don't look for compliments. We don't seek them out. Um, but you know, when they come along, I, I thought it was a good meeting too. We, it was just a, a good time to listen to the folks at Long Beach and see what's on their mind. So that's great. Thank you, Zenas. Um, just real quick, I'm going to go backwards for one second. Um, and something that uh, was just said, I, am I a climate change than I, I'm going to say it right here. Yes, I am. Because these things have been going on since the beginning of time, not since the 1980s. Tides ebb and flow, temperatures go up, temperatures go down. This is the way, this is the way things work. This is the way it happens. But, um, you know, I, I, I want to make sure that my feelings on this are separate from the board. And they're my feelings alone and nobody else's. So I just want to make that clear. Uh, that's great. Monty, do we have anybody else for public comment? At this time, I do not see anybody else. Okay. Thank you, Monty. I appreciate that. Um, next, we're going to move on to appointment interviews. Item C, Corey Wren for the Open Space and Recreation Committee. And I thought I saw Larry on here. Am I right? I, I was scrolling through. Larry Neal, are you there somewhere? Monty, if you see Larry, unmute Larry, please. Thank you. Nope, there we go. Hi, Larry. Hi. Okay, I'm so. You, yeah, go ahead. Right, so if I vanish, <laughs> don't be insulted. No problem. <laughs> All right, so I actually, I was leaving it open to you. Um, Aaron Chalufo, I'm sorry, uh, Corey Wren is um, uh, applying to be on the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Why don't you tell us a little bit, Larry, from your perspective, and then we'll get to Corey and hear from him. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I'm gonna probably tell the same story I have uh, for the last couple folks that have joined, but, um, the Open Space Committee, uh, when we actually, when we did the last report, um, we tried to make a real effort to understand what the young people in Rockport would like to see. And, you know, for all of us, it's easy to slip into the idea of we, we sort of know, especially us that grew up here, I guess. Um, so, um, you know, we sent our, uh, our, our questionnaire to the to the schools and got great response. All, almost every student filled them out in the, uh, in the junior high school. And we've been really fortunate that we've had some people uh, that are interested in joining the open space committee, uh, a little, little older than high school kids, but still young in my eyes. So it's been a pleasure. And uh, Corey specifically, 
Uh, he's been to, I don't know, maybe like three meetings. Uh, he's jumped right on doing uh, some projects for us. Uh, the person that we had who did our GIS work from the beginning, really, of open space has stopped being a member, and Corey has skills in that area and has worked with the DPW to uh, try to learn our system. So uh, I'll let Corey speak, speak for himself, but thank you for uh, entertaining him. Thanks, Larry. Thanks for bringing him forward. All right, we're going to uh, open it up to you, Corey. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and, uh, and what, you, what you're looking to accomplish? Great. Thanks for having me on. Uh, thanks, Larry. Uh, I, I have a degree in natural resource conservation, and I've done a lot of work with uh, research partners and um, field research, especially uh, some of them hands on in the field, some of them just education. So I have a lot of experience with uh, reaching intergenerational individuals, uh, either marine science or pollinators. And so I find myself in Rockport once again. I grew up here, went to high school, and I hope to join one of these committees to give back to my community in the way that it's impacted me through events at uh, our open spaces or leading hikes, whatever it takes. Um, I've enjoyed being on some of the meetings so far. I've had to uh, unfortunately miss a couple because of uh, COVID and the times we are in but I've learned a lot about the way the town has being, uh, is being run in aspect to the space. And I look forward to uh, going out there and improving our open space experiences. That's awesome. Is there, um, that's it in a general sense, but is there anything in particular, Corey, that you're looking to accomplish? Um, is there anything that you saw that you really want to dig into? Yeah, I've had discussions with my friends and uh, knowing how the community uses uh, the South Woods or our part of Dogtown a lot. I find myself wanting to, um, to put up signs out there for directions, but I know that's a hot topic and we don't want to pollute the woods with too many signs. Um, but I've bumped into bikers and myself uh, when I was in high school, getting lost out there, um, just you know, wondering uh, which which trail to use to get back to downtown or the quarries. So uh, that's something I'd like to tackle. And obviously, folks um, who own the parcels in Dogtown and South Woods, like that's, that's a whole other issue. But I'm up to the challenge to talk to um, everyone. That's great, Corey. Thank you so much. Uh, I will open it up to the rest of the board. Anybody have any questions, Paul? Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Corey, what's your what's uh, your current or do you have a relationship with Essex uh, Greenbelt? I currently work with the trustees. Okay, it's a uh, uh, conservation restriction steward, and uh, we co-hold a conservation restriction with Essex County. And I work with my current owner. Good. Excellent. Good. And uh, it, it, as uh, the chairman mentioned about any projects, uh, anything that you can uh, speak to uh, that may uh, cross the cross section between Gloucester and Rockport? Um, that he's speaking on the projects that I've started with Larry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, I believe the only ones uh, we considered are um, near Halbert Point and Southwoods. Perfect. Perfect. Monster, yes. Yeah. Great. Thank you for uh, putting your name forward, Corey. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, Paul. Um, Herm, Ross, questions, <clears throat> comments, concerns? Nope. My, uh, well, I'll, I'll raise a uh, few questions, Mr. Chair. I'm, Please. I'm interested in knowing what your thoughts are on future development of any of the areas of Rockwood. Um, Rockwood is over 60% green. We have a need for housing. How do you see your interest in using green spaces um, and the possibility of future development? 
housing development that is in town? Do you see that as compatible or incompatible? Uh, it depends on the density, really. Uh, a lot of, if you were to go build towards the woods, you are bumping into wetland buffers. So I, um, I mean, personally, I would really make sure the development of a parcel is highly researched before anything, even the foundations port. Um, but in regards to housing, uh, every year I hear the high school and middle school have less and less students in each class. And he, excuse me. Oh, sorry. Um, <clears throat> and that obviously is coupled with the need for affordable housing because folks my age uh, may have kids who are going into high school or eventually. And to be honest, I would not be able to afford a house in Rockport without government assistance or other. So, like there, there would be some lots uh, closer to green spaces that might be, or built around a green space would help with bringing more young people into town. Okay, so I, I, I gather then you, you see the possible need for there to be um, some future development, as given that it would not be in wet space or wetlands, and not it, it'd be a Obviously, it's unfortunate to chop down a section of forest that has high biodiversity, um, but in the right circumstances to make affordable housing a reality in this town and to keep this town running for future generations, then I'd say we have to um, research it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Harm. Okay. Um, any further comments from the board? Hearing none, is there a motion? I have a motion, Mr. Chair. Please. I move the assessment appoint Corey Rind as a member of the Open Space and Recre Recreation Committee for a term to expire June 30th, 2022. I will second that. Motion's made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Yes. Aye. Selectman. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Corey, welcome. Thank you. And we're looking forward to great things. Thank you so much. And my pleasure. Our pleasure. Um, okay. Now, now, this is something that our next item is something that's uh, long overdue. Hasn't been in that long, but we wanted to get him in here. So Aaron Chalupo has taken over as our, uh, what we'll affectionately call our second banana with Gary. Um, and we have a great team going on in that office right now. So, Gary, I will start it with you, and then we'll go over to Aaron for a little introduction from him and go from there. So why don't you tell us uh, what you know? Excellent. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Um, I would like to introduce Mr. Aaron Shalufo, my new assistant DPW director. Um, Aaron will be responsible for assisting me with administrative and operational functions, uh, including the management of the operations and treatment divisions, engineering division and public works capital projects. Also key areas of responsibility include managing departmental budget, enterprise accounts, large scale projects and maintenance of roadway infrastructure. Um, previously, Aaron joins us from working at the town of Danvers Department of Public Works as the water sewer supervisor. He has over 27 years experience as a civil engineer in the municipal sector, including over 23 years direct management responsibilities for various municipal employees. Um, Aaron graduated from UMass Lowell with a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering. He is also a graduate of the MMA Suffolk program. Um, currently, Aaron has and maintains the following licenses water distribution 3D and water treatment 4T, sewer collection system certification grade four, septic system inspector and soil evaluator. Um, Aaron is involved in many professional organizations which include uh, American Public Works Association, New England Water Works Association, 
Water Environmental Federation. And recently he was past president for the Essex County Highway Association. Um, in closing, the few months that Aaron has been working with me, he has been a valuable asset and I look forward to working with him in the near future. Uh, we are both available for any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thanks, Gary, I appreciate it. Thanks for that great introduction. Um, Mitch, did you want to jump in here and have and say something? Certainly, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, echo. I want to echo um, the comments from Gary on Aaron. We're pleased to have him as a member of the leadership team in Public Works. Um, the department has certainly gone through some transition in the last year or so, uh, but uh, it is uh, well situated now with a very good leadership team in place to be able to hit the ground running and move forward on the uh, many large-scale projects that uh, are in front of uh, the department. Um, you name it, and Public Works is involved in, in, in some facet, from uh, you know, paving to our climate resiliency work to our facilities and infrastructure and uh, sewer capacity, anything in between DPW is involved. And uh, we're very fortunate to have a really good team in place with Gary and Aaron uh, and all of their supervisors and foremen and all of our um, uh, line staff uh, working with them. So. Uh, good place now and glad to have Aaron and Gary in their roles and uh, leading us forward. Thank you very much, Mitch. I appreciate that. Um, I, see, I see we have some of the commissioners on here. We would either, any of the commissioners like to comment before I get to Aaron? We'll put them right on the spot. Jim, Bruce. Jim, go ahead. You're unmuted. Well, I'd just like to say that we're very uh, grateful to have Aaron join our team. Um, he's he brings a wealth of experience and knowledge and uh, licenses, which we really needed in the department. Uh, so we're very glad to have him. Very good. Thanks, Jim. Bruce? Just, just uh, really, I'd say the same thing that Jim just said. We're, we're happy to have him. Well, that's it. Well, in, in, the, uh, in the context of a DPW joke here, I'll say, Aaron, you've had plenty of smoke blowing up your backhoe right now. So let, we're going to turn it over to you, and uh, let's hear from you now. So let's hear it. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the kind words. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really excited to be in the town of Rockport. Uh, I grew up in the city of Gloucester, born and bred. Uh, I started my career with the city of Gloucester's engineering division. Um, so it's, I'm glad to be back on Cape Ann. I don't have to go over the bridge anymore. So uh, that's a good thing. And, uh, you know, Rockport's got its challenges, and I'm looking forward to, to taking them head on. Um, you know, for a small town, you uh, you have all the city all the city functions. You know, so from wastewater to water treatment, uh, all the infrastructure. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us, and uh, Gary, you're going to work hard to try to complete these projects. Aaron, we are very very happy to have you. Um, you came highly recommended. Uh, I, I've talked to you a few times. Um, and it's just, it's very, it's nice to have somebody it's with you and Gary, and of course our commissioners and our DPW staff to be able to walk in, just ask a question, get a straight answer. Um, it's, it's very refreshing. And I just, I just saw Larry jump on. Larry is there. Would you like to jump in here? I gave the other commissioners a chance. I, I would extend the same to you if you'd like. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I'm just going to repeat what everyone else says, but I think it's worth repeating that um, I, I agree with all the words that have been said. And, uh, you know, Gary, Gary and Aaron are really at the at the center of the target, you might say, every day. And um, the amount of work these guys do, the amount of issues they deal with, you know, hats off to them. And uh, it's great to see the tremendous effort they put in. Thank you. That's great. Thanks, Thank Larry. We appreciate that. Well, Aaron, I, I obviously Rockport having all of those uh, big town accoutrement also have uh, a lot of uh, big town problems too in a smaller context. Uh, and we're looking obviously to you and the commissioners and Gary and your whole staff to um, keep Rockport as beautiful as, it, as it's been. So thank you for, for coming on board with us. Uh, and with that, I'll open it up to the rest of the board. Um, Paul, Ross, Herm. Well, I'll jump in if Paul isn't going to say something first. Oh. All right. Welcome to uh, welcome to Rockwood. I see you as an individual who can help Rockwood and Gloucester work more closely together. 
I'm a graduate of Gloucester High. I grew up in Rockwood, but a graduate of Gloucester High. And I advocate this um, renewed emphasis on collaboration. So here you are, a product of Gloucester, working in Rockwood. So I look forward to anything you can do to help that out. Absolutely. I, I, actually, I actually worked with uh, in the city engineering division, and I'm, I'm actually very uh, close to uh, the DPW director there now. Um, so we have a good working relationship, and it's something that we should definitely be doing uh, all the communities in this area, we should be trying to collaborate. That's that's a hundred. I hundred percent agree with that. Thank you for your for your words. Thank you, Paul Ross. I I, do, I would just want to echo uh, what uh, Selectman Lilia said as well, uh, Aaron. Uh, welcome to Rockport. I, I'm I'm sure uh, your familiarity with the town, growing up in Gloucester, is going to be helpful. And uh, I wish you all the best. And uh, I'm sure it will go well. That's great. Ross? Uh, I mean, I'll just say welcome to Rockport, and uh, I've only heard good things so far, so I'm sure it'll stay that way, though. Gary's a good guy, too. I don't think he'll talk bad. <laughs> that's it. Well, that's great. Aaron, anything in closing? I'm good. Thank you. Appreciate, but, appreciate the time. Nice to meet you all. The pleasure's ours. Welcome. Glad to have you, and I'm looking forward to the great things you're going to accomplish for the people of Rockport. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. That's great. Uh, let's move on to item number E. It's the it's to consider support of DPW related legislation, particularly a bottle bill, a mattress bill, and a paint bill. Um, I know we have the commissioners on here tonight, and I think we have Sharon. Yeah, Sharon's right there. I see Sharon. I feel like romper room here. Remember, I see Sharon. I see Mitch. I see. There you go. Um, so why don't we? Who's who wants to give the overview? Jim, you want to do that? Okay, uh, Monty, if you could um, unmute Jim, that would be great. And then we'll hear from anybody else um, related to this who wants to speak. Jim, go ahead. Okay, so um, these are three bills uh, currently being considered by committee at the state level. There are literally dozens of environmentally related uh, bills that are being considered, but these three in particular are ones that uh, are called, known as uh, extended producer responsibility bills. Basically what they do is um, they make it easier for things that are manufactured to be recycled. Um, we're in favor of increasing uh, the ability of things to be recycled because the more things that are recycled, the less stuff ends up in the, in the waste stream and the, the less expense it, it results in for us. Um, the bottle bill basically is, is uh, the same as the existing bottle bill, but it's expanded. It includes bottles that weren't uh, in the initial one. Uh, the mattress bill calls for mattress manufacturers to pay for the cost of recycling mattresses. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but as of November of uh, this coming year, um, the legislature has already voted that mattresses cannot simply be put into the trash. Mattresses will need to be examined and those that are recyclable will have to be recycled. This doesn't mean that Rockport has to offer that service, but it is no longer gonna be possible to just trash a mattress when you're done with it. Um, so what this, this particular bill calls for is for the mattress manufacturers to bear the cost of that recycling. Um, rather than having the consumer bear the cost. And then the paint bill uh, basically makes it easier to recycle both latex and oil paint so that those things are also not in the waste stream. Um, so what we're looking for is uh, oh, the commissioners reviewed this last week and voted unanimously to support these. And we have already sent a letter to both Bruce Tarr and Ann Margaret Ferrante indicating um, that we would like them to support these bills. Um, so this is an opportunity for the selectmen to do the same, either individually or as a board. Um, if you have any questions, uh, Sharon Kashida is here. She uh, knows a little bit more about the legislation than I do because I know she's actually read all the bills in depth. Uh, but uh, basically, that's that's the uh, the gist of it. 
Great. Thanks, Jim. I appreciate the uh, the overview on that. Sharon, you want to jump in and uh, and tell us and add to uh, what Jim just said? There's not much to add. I guess I would really want to reiterate that um, the passage of these bills would help Rockport and all Massachusetts communities. Um, the state of Massachusetts has a um, dwindling dress, uh, trash capacity problem, and we're seeing disposal pricing going up. There are ready markets for these um, materials to be recycled and should be managed out of the waste stream. Um, it's better for the economy, will create jobs, and uh, it will improve our environment. Great. Thanks, Sharon. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Um, I, I have a, a couple of, unless there's, there's anybody else from the commissioners or anybody that wanted to comment, um, one second, Paul, just real quick. Sure. Uh, and then we'll jump in. So nobody else from the commissioners? Okay. I, I have just two quick questions for you. Um, number one is, it sounds like that the, the mattress bill is a little bit convoluted as far as, you know, manufacturers paying. Um, how is on any of these bills, are there any out of pocket costs up front that the town has to outlay and then recover after the fact? So what's going to happen if we use the, the mattress and the paint bill? And let me just say the paint bill has been passed by 10 states plus the District of Columbia. Every state that abuts Massachusetts, save New Hampshire, has successfully passed and successfully implemented the paint bill. So um, when you go and buy a new uh, can of paint, um, there's going to be a, an additional fee depending on the size of that paint can that is going to pay for the recovery of all the all the paint that is out there. And that includes what's called legacy paint. So if you're like me, you probably have paint in your basement that you've been waiting for to get to get rid of. Now, uh, if this is passed, anybody will be able to to bring their paint back, whether it's latex, which is currently disposed in our trash trailer or oil-based stains and the like, will all be, um, the cost will be picked up by uh, the paint industry, which supports this bill and similarly to the mattress bill. So, and, and also just with respect to the mattress bill, I certainly hope that um, Rockport will continue to accept mattresses and under this scenario to be recycled, but it is a voluntary program. The town does not have to accept mattresses. Okay, well, which I, I that was, a, I thank you for that, but I just want to be extra clear on this. There, you're telling me that there are no upfront costs to the town. Am I correct on that? I, it's okay. I just, right. I just want a clear picture. That's all. Well, I think, um, you know, the town is planning to have a hazardous waste collection event this spring, which I think everybody um, listening tonight should be really happy about. So in our town, we generally pass costs on to our residents, correct? And probably for the hazardous waste event, when residents come in, they're going to pay for the amount of hazardous waste that they bring in based on the contract that the town signs. With the paint bill passage, people that bring in paint to that event will not have to pay for that. There'll be a company there that will be paid by the paint industry to take it away, make sure it goes to the right place. And the town is not on the, uh, on the hook for that, nor is the resident. Um, you know, as to mattresses, uh, you know, I think Brian would, uh, would correctly say we're going to need to make some changes to the transfer station to accommodate this. So I can't speak directly to that, but the cost uh, to manage the uh, mattresses would be, would not, would be zero. Good. That, that's what I wanted to hear. And actually, that was a, a perfect segue into my second question. Uh, which would might be better suited to the DPW commissioners or Gary. Um, how will this impact the transfer station? Is there going to be any kind of a redesign of any kind or a special area for these things, Jim? So um, 
we're looking at the transfer station and there's been a lot of discussion and uh, the commissioners have fielded a lot of requests uh, to make more things so the transfer station can accept more types of things. So for, and it's also possible that the state is gonna require that we separate things out. So, but currently the way the transfer station is configured it would be very difficult to do anything more than what we're currently doing up there. So the only way, you know, whether the state mandates that we do things or whether we choose to do things in the future, the only way we can do that is if we reconfigure the traffic flow and make uh, the, the whole process up there uh, cleaner and smoother. Because right now, even the existing process is kind of dangerous for people carrying trash bags or recyclables across the, the traffic lane and people backing up into one another. I mean, it's kind of a, it's, it's crazy up there at the moment. So we do, we have requested money to look at a redesign of the transfer station, but what we actually do up there right now, none of these bills require that we do anything at the transfer station. If we were to choose to do something we would need to probably redesign the traffic flow to make room for it so it made sense within the current process. So you're saying that if these bills pass, you would go ahead and, and, and work on, and I'm sure, I know you folks, you're, you're, you're proactive, not reactive on this stuff. Um, are you already looking at a redesign to accommodate? We're already, we're already looking, we've, been, we've wanted to do a redesign up there for quite a while, simply because it's just dangerous the way it works right now. Right. Um, we anticipate that the state may, <clears throat> right, they're already going to require that mattresses get inspected uh, and those that are recyclable are recycled. Now, it doesn't mean that Rockport has to do it. We could simply say we're not going to accept mattresses and you're going to have to find another facility to take your mattress. But if we were to decide that we were going to provide that service to the town, then we would have to reconfigure the station somewhat so that we had a place to inspect mattresses and store mattresses before they get picked up to be recycled. The only thing about this mattress bill that we're asking support for, the, mat the legislature has already made the decision that mattresses will have to be recycled and that will go into effect this November. The mattress bill that we're asking for support for basically takes the cost off the consumer for recycling mattresses and put it put puts that cost back on the mattress manufacturer. So the only thing this does is reduce our costs if we choose to do recycling. Is the money for the is the money for the mattresses and if and or paint actually mattresses uh, not money I'm sorry the um, program retroacts to people who bought mattresses before this was enacted. So in other words, if somebody has a mattress in their house. And this program is put in. Are they, they going to say no? You it has to be bought from a certain point forward. No, it, everything is going to be taken. Everything. It's like the paint, the legacy mattresses, as well as the legacy paint. So I have ten-year-old cans of paint that will be that will fall under that bill. Yeah, I, I, I think we all do, Sharon. <laughs> so, yeah, I think yeah, we all do. Old cans of paint. <laughs> yeah, right. Honest to goodness. Um, okay, let's open it up to the board. Other questions from the board? Paul? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to reiterate uh, because, or, or state again, but uh, Jim and uh, Sharon answered all my questions uh, regarding this. So uh, thank you for all your support on this. And uh, uh, I'd like to hear from other members. Thank you for your support. Herm? Well, I, I certainly appreciate your efforts. Um, I welcome the added recycling efforts um, by the state, by the country. Um, but I'm curious as to how you picked out these three. You said that there were literally dozens of such bills at the state level, I dare say, for consideration. How did you end up picking out these three? So just to be clear, when sh there are hundreds of um, environmental bills at the state level? At the state level, that is correct in the current session. And um, 
uh, actually both Jim and I, I have been very focused on waste reduction. I worked um, for MassDEP for 25 years in the Bureau of Waste Reduction. Um, and so these are, I guess you could say, these are my pet bills and this is what I know. So now that I'm retired and now that I can uh, use my voice to advocate for legislation, which I couldn't do um, as a state employee, I know that these bills will benefit Massachusetts communities. And I know that they'll be effective in ways that I have spent, as I said, 25, almost 30 years actually, working on initiatives to reduce waste, to save resources, um, avoid more incineration. As, as you probably all know, we send our trash to an incinerator in Saugus, Massachusetts. It is the oldest incinerator in the country. And uh, there are many folks that would like to see it closed. And as I said earlier, we are running out of places to put our trash. We are sending an inordinate amount right now to New Hampshire, New York, and as far as away as Ohio. Uh, there are better ways to manage our stuff. And so we're changing. This would be a real game changer because right now, the way trash is managed is that Massachusetts municipalities are standing at the end of the pipe and they, are, they have no input as, as to how a product is designed. And yet they're the ones that receive it, have to manage it, have to pay for it. Um, so we want, we want to, it's bass backwards, if you excuse the expression, we need to turn it around. And we need to get producers, brand um, manufacturers who can design products without looking at how sustainable is this product? So it's really, we're really looking at, uh, the easiest way to put this, it's, it's a step towards a circular economy and it's where we need to go. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon. Thank you. That, that's great. Um, Ross? Um, I just want to say, I'm assuming uh, we have enough time that, to get something in place for the mattresses that we wouldn't be refusing mattresses from anyone in town, right? I mean, I don't think that'd be a good look if we refuse to recycle a mat mattress for a resident. I just want to, I'm assuming we'd have enough time based on the timeline. We've, of this we've requested money to do a redesign of the, uh, of the flow at the transfer station, and we know what it is we need to do up there, but there is... Um, I mean, there's there's a lot of work to be done um, to enable the the transfer station to recycle mattresses. If if I mean, you know, I think there's some question whether whether we ought to do it right away or whether we should do it when we're ready to do it. Um, you know, I think I think we can really only do it when we're ready to do it, and we're going to need to move some things around, find some space, uh, make the whole flow up there um, make sense. We're also going to have to dedicate, you know, to do mattress recycling means we're going to have to train people to inspect mattresses. And we're going to have to have some criteria by which we either accept or reject a mattress for recycling. Um, so, uh, but, but this particular mattress bill means that the cost of the recycling isn't borne by the consumer. It's, it's going to be transferred back to the manufacturer. So whether we do it right away or not, either way, it'll cost people less to do the, to have the recycling done. So. Jim, just a point of clarification, if we can. You say whether it will get recycled or not. I, I want to be clear. Every mattress will be accepted in but only some will be recycled. Do I have that right, or am I missing something? So the way the idea with the with the initial bill that already passed was that mattresses that are not recyclable are mattresses that are either um, too destroyed or too soiled or infested with bed bugs. Those things would go into the trash, but anything that isn't irreparably damaged like that would have to be recycled. So at some point there needs to be an inspection process. 
Um, and if we're going to do it in Rockport, we'll need to set up criteria and have, you know, Mark and Brian trained to do that or hire somebody else to do it. I mean, we don't need to do it. We don't need to offer it every day. We could do it once a month, for instance, and have a day set aside when we'll take mattresses and we'll inspect them and set them aside. But either way, we'll need to have a place where we store the mattress that are recyclable um, so that they can then be picked up and, and taken away in bulk once we have enough. So, so if it's recyclable, it, um, so I'll get right to you, Sharon, one second. Okay. Uh, if it's recyclable, obviously it'll be taken in at no cost. But if it's deemed not recyclable, it will go in the regular trash and then a regular charge will apply to that. Do I have that right? Well, that's true if this mattress bill gets passed. If if they if this mattress bill doesn't pass, then there will be a cost to the person leaving the mattress to have the mattress recycled. Okay. Okay. Good. So there'll be a cost for both. There'll be a cost for throwing away and there'll be a cost for recycling it unless this bill passes. In which okay. case the recycling cost gets passed back to the, the manufacturer. But currently okay. right now, when someone brings a uh, mattress uh, to the dumpster, it's a five, ten dollar charge. It's a ten dollar charge, but the yeah. recycling cost is going to be greater than that. Okay. So that presents us with a with an issue of how we how we're going to price this because if this mattress bill that we're proposing doesn't pass and the recycling is mandated and the consumer has to pay for the recycling, I believe the cost of recycling is closer to $40 for a mattress. So we're gonna have a, an issue where it'll cost $10 to throw it away or $40 to recycle it. We don't wanna see people intentionally trashing their mattresses so that they can then throw them away for $10, we'd have to set the, the, the disposal price higher. Um, you know, we'd have to figure out what the pricing is, but that's, that's the dilemma we face if this mattress bill doesn't pass. So that's why we're in favor of it. I get what you're saying, but if we could just keep an eye, and I know you guys do this, but just be cognizant of the consumer in town. I don't want to have to, I don't want people to look for ways around something i want them i i if this is going to work i want them to work within the program Absolutely. and not not find ways to do it so i don't want to make it cost prohibitive you know uh you know all that kind of stuff so i'm no, sorry we're, Sharon. We're, no, we're 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 aware of all those factors and we're trying to manage it you know right good now. i know you are thanks jim i appreciate that uh sharon go ahead you were going to say so just uh, at the you know, at the expense of repeating what, what Jim has said, um, we know the bet that mattresses are going to be banned as of November 1st. If uh, it's chances are, if this bill makes it through all the gates, it probably will not be implemented before November 1st. But this ban on disposal is going to impact 351 communities in Massachusetts not just Rockport. And going back to Aaron and the other discussion about regional collaboration, I think this is, you know, clearly Gloucester is gonna have to make a decision about how they manage mattresses too. And I think this is a great opportunity to look at how we can collaborate. And as Jim said, it doesn't have to be five days a week, you know, that you can drop off a mattress. You know, it could be once a month, it could be. And I think, you know, people are certainly gonna be motivated to, if you buy a new mattress, you're gonna have uh, Bernie and Phil's pick it up or, or Jordan's pick it up when they deliver the new one. And just uh, one thing, I, I hate correcting Jim, but um, probably the, the cost to recycle a mattress is, is more like 20 to 25, but they consider mattresses separate from box springs. So that would get you closer to that $40 price point. Good. Okay. Thank um, you. Th no, thanks for that clarification, Sharon. Um, other questions from the board? Nope. Um, on a side note, I, I, and this is a wayside note, but Sharon, I want to apologize to you because when I'm wrong, I want to admit it. Um, you know that when we started with this pay-as-you-throw thing, uh, I was opposed to this. 
And I got to tell you, after seeing this implemented and seeing the success that it's had, my thing was the choice for people and being able to, to do things. But we've managed it well, and it's been a good th- a, No, it's been a great thing for this town. So thank you. And you have my apology. I was wrong on that one. And I'm big enough to admit it. How's that? How's that? And Don, how about if I can talk to you about climate change next? Yeah, let's not push it. We got to take baby steps here, Sharon. Let's go that road first. But that's good. Thank uh, well, you. Th- yeah, no problem. Thank you. Um, OK, so I, again, uh, last time, any other questions from the board? No, nope. I, I, I got to tell you, I don't know if we need a. Do we have a vote on this? There is yes, we do. Yeah, we do. Go, yeah, please go right ahead. Let's do let's make the motion, please. OK, Mr. Chair, I have a motion. I move that the Board of Selectmen support DPW related articles, which include the bottle bill, mattress bill and paint bill and sign a letter of support to Senator Tarr and Representative Ferrante. Second. Motions made and seconded. Further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you to the commissioners, to Gary, and everybody who, uh, who put the mechanics of all this together. Uh, we know if it does get passed, you guys will do a great job with it. Um, and provide some more um, well-needed services to the town. Paint cans, I'll be right there with you. I'll grab my son's pickup truck. We'll load them right in, and we'll send them out. So thank you all. Thank you. Don't forget to swing by here first, though, before you go up, okay? Whatever you need, Jim. I'm there for you, buddy. (laughs) Whatever you need. Not a problem. Okay, great. Uh, Moving on to the consent agenda, uh, item F. It consists of the approval of minutes, yearly license renewal, common victorless lodging, housing, entertainment, and livery, Approval of home occupation permit, juniors cleaning service and maintenance. Uh, 15 Long Beach lease to reflect the change of address. 16 Long Beach to reflect the transfer of ownership. Does anybody wish to hold an item off of the consent agenda? Nope. I will make a motion if you'd like, Mr. Chairman. Please. I move that the board uh, approve all non-held items on the consent agenda. I'll second that. Motions made and seconded. Further discussion on this? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Um, we were going on to the action list. Uh, first is the open to open the annual town meeting warrant. Is there a motion? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the selectmen open the annual town meeting warrant until February 1st, 2022. Great. Further discussion on this? No, Mitch, did you have any comments on this? Are you good? All set, Mr. Chair, starts the annual process. Very good. Appreciate it. Um, Okay, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Selectman Murphy? Aye. Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Um, item number two, the Emerson Inn temporary closure request. Is there a motion? Uh, before Mr. You Chairman. Motion, Mr. Chair, may I? I'm sorry? I'll, I'll be abstaining from the Emerson Inn and the Fish Shack as my business holds a liquor license. I'm happy Very to make good. the motion. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Selectman Murphy. Go right ahead, please. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Selectman approve the Emerson Inn's request to temporarily close from December 12th 2021 through March 31st, 2022. Excellent. And we've all got this in the packet. We reviewed everything. Um, Anybody have any further discussion or questions? Nope. Okay. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 3-0 with one abstention. Um, Is there a motion on the fish shack? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the Fish Shack's request to temporarily close due to the rising COVID-19 cases, and we'll let the board know the reopening date once it has been determined, but no later than April 15, 2022. I will second that. Very good. Any further discussion on this? Nope. Hearing none, um, Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. 
Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 3-0 with one abstention. Uh, we move on to item number four. Ross will join us again. The Rockport Farmers Market request for use of Harvey Park. Is there a motion? Oh, I, I can make that. Uh, I move that. Oh, Sarah the, had that. That's right. I'm sorry. That, that's okay. That's right. I, I move that the selectmen approve Rockport Exchange request to hold the Rockport Farmers Market on Saturday from uh, June 25th to October 15th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Harvey Park and allow the use of four parking spaces in front of Har Harvey Park on Mount Pleasant Street for tempor temporary 15 minute um, market parking for patrons, uh, patrons to uh, brief stops in the market and to use the annex parking lot for vendor parking with a valid pass issued by the police department. I'll second that. Good, motion has been made and seconded for the discussion on this one. Nice to see these events, you know, taking place in town and, and that I hate to use the word normal, but getting back to somewhat normal, even though we're, we're even in different times now than we were before, but it's nice to have these on the books. I like to see uh, it going back down to Harvey Park. I think success, say, a lot more successful down to Harvey Park, I feel. Yeah, so. yeah, that's great. Um, okay, uh, you've heard the motion, it's been seconded for the discussion. Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett? Aye. Uh, Selectman Murphy? Aye. Uh, Selectman Lilia? Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Uh, item number G5, the renewal of the Economic Development Committee charge. Is there a motion? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I move that the Board of Selectmen renew the Economic Development Committee charge through March 31st, 2022. I'll second that. Sorry. Motions made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Loya. Aye. Uh, and Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 4-0. Um, okay, so we are moving on to... That's the, the that we, we just did the economic. I was looking at something on my phone to get the uh, the next stuff up. Uh, economic development charge. We're done with that, correct? Right. Correct. We just did that. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, moving on to item number six, G six, the Green Community Task Force Committee charge. Um, before we make this motion, I, I want to make a, a very brief statement, and I want people to understand that. This board of selectmen is looking to work cooperatively with the Green Community Task Force. Um, we want to do this for matters of openness, transparency, um, to make sure that all committees and commissions that are affected by the votes and the um, undertakings of the Green Community Task Force have been fully vetted that we know costing, responsibility, and um, it just goes a long way to making sure that this committee operates um, and is given all of the, the help and assistance needed in order to accomplish their charge. Now, some may look at that differently. Some may think that there are ulterior motives. I assure you, there are not. We've had some concerns raised um, by other committees that have said they still don't have a clear understanding of current initiatives being undertaken by the GCTF. Um, I listened in on the last commissioner's meeting, and quite honestly, it was very confusing. Um, it got a little anxious at points, to use a word. And this is only meant to make sure that everybody is singing off of the same sheet of music. That's the purpose of this. This committee charge is not being changed lightly and it's not being done um, out of any retribution. It's being done to make sure that we, we get everything we can from that committee um, and that they give everything that they can to the other committees who their decisions are affecting. 
So with that said, um, there are, let me see, the current, the current charge, that's what I was looking up, the current charge, develop a plan for the continuation of town energy reduction and make applicable recommendations to the DPW commissioners and board of selectmen for implementation. Participate in regional collaborations for educating the communities on energy reduction choices. Take community education outreach measures and provide assistance when feasible. The, the change to the charge, the new updated charge, if it passes tonight. The Green Community Task Force is charged with developing written recommendations to the Board of Selectmen, Town Administrator, and DPW Commissioners in the form of an ERP energy reduction plan for the continuation of set efforts on a town-wide basis. The plan shall be for a rolling three-year period. The plan as approved by the selectmen and commissioners shall be reviewed on a quarterly basis. Projects undertaken shall be in line with the ERP and be approved in advance by the selectmen and commissioners. Projects may be facilitated by the, town, by the task force or town department as determined by the selectmen composition. The task force shall consist of seven members. Um, as far as an ERP is concerned, um, Almost every town, Ross has put some time and effort into researching this, and almost everybody has an ERP. Um, and that's something that we would like to make sure that we're all singing off the same sheet of music on this. So as you can see, with all the brouhaha and all the accolades that have been bestowed on the Green Community Task Force, and well-deserved, by the way, um, I believe that these changes are necessary to make sure that we everybody is informed about what their responsibilities are, whether it be from a labor standpoint or from a monetary standpoint. And these are the reasons with that we're undertaking um, a potential change here. So with that said, um, we haven't read we have not read the motion yet, correct? Correct. OK, um, let's have the motion, then we'll have discussion. So is there a motion? I have the motion, Mr. Chair. I move that the selectmen amend the Green Community Task Force charge as presented thank you um is there a second i'll second that thank you herm uh, motions made and seconded as there are further discussion from the board anything that i may have missed anything that anybody wants to add uh yeah, yeah mr chairman if i may uh I'd, Please. I'd like to hear from the commissioners um as well from uh, uh current uh green committee members uh just to to ha have them weigh in Okay. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, I'll, I'll step in. Uh, I mean, just some of the major concerns we've had. I mean, at no point did you know a lot of the comments were saying how they're kind of directed that we're we're assuming the green the task force is doing a bad job. We've never said that. Some of our major concerns have been, you know, the EV stations are great, but in the end, we got slapped for the spots in town lot being EV only when. I personally am the one that announced they didn't have to be EV only. Lo and behold, in the end, they did, and we were never informed of that properly. Um, second of all, the street lights, they're great. You know, we 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 we've ordered to move forward with the project, and then all of a sudden we get an email saying we need to pay three hundred fifty thousand dollars for these. Obviously, now I know Bill's worked with Kerry to get a process done where hopefully we won't have to, but that's just something that out of the blue, you know, is a little concerning that we didn't know of ahead of time. That, that was a possibility. I understand that a grant got taken away, but or well, not taken away, the grant itself dissolved. And then that's just another point I'm, we're trying to make and hopefully some of these things can clarify it with a more streamlined process. Thank you, Ross. Um, anybody else from the board on comment? Herm, Paul? No, nope. I, I just want to hear from the commissioners and uh, yeah. some of the members of the committee. Well, I, I'll, I'm going to keep we've heard from all of the members. We know how they feel. I will give it if I, let me scroll back here is. Uh, Tom, yeah, Tom's on that. If Tom wants to speak as he's chairman, then I will let Tom speak. But we've heard from pretty much everybody else from the commissioner's standpoint. Um, I see we have all three here still. Um, would you folks like to weigh in? 
Mr. Chair, uh, Selectman Loya has his hand up. I'm not sure if you saw Oh, I'm, I didn't see that. I'm sorry, Herm, go ahead. Okay. I apologize. Uh, I, I would like them to specifically speak to the revised charge and tell us what in fact is onerous. And um, so uh, if they could do that, I would be pleased. Thanks, Herm. Okay, um, her, uh, Jim, Bruce, or Larry, um, would you like to, Jim, go ahead, please. Well, um, I'm not quite sure how to respond to this. Um, I uh, I saw this proposed change uh, earlier this evening. Um, I didn't know it was happening, and I didn't. Uh, I mean, no one has spoken to me about it, or had we haven't had any discussion about it. Um, uh, you know, what the proposed change was supposed to do, why it was necessary. Um, so I'm, maybe I'm the only commissioner, but I feel like I'm a little bit in the dark on this. Um, uh, I, I will say that, you know, the green community um, does a lot of work and they are, um, they move forward pretty quickly. They're trying to get a lot of stuff done. And I think in, in, in um, operating that way, um, sometimes um, some communication doesn't happen that needs to happen. Um, you know, we did have uh, a concern at the transfer station when the EV, um, the contractor for the new EV um, parking um, stanchions went up and started to put them in and it turned out that that particular contractor um, hadn't worked on a transfer station that had an 18 inch membrane before and it's critical that the membrane not be pierced. So, you know, there are um, basic elements of communication that need to occur um, sometimes, you know, with the, 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 the pace at which the green community is trying to get things done, I think sometimes those things don't happen. Um, but, I, but this particular change in charge, is, you know, apparently was done by the, uh, by the selectmen. Um, and, uh, you know, there is, and maybe you spoke to Bruce or Larry about it, but I, I didn't have any input into this. So um, that's about all I can say. Well, I appreciate that. And actually you've, you've, you've somewhat made the case here, Jim, because there are some things that you had questions on and, and things that should have been vetted out beforehand in what, something that affects the DPW, uh, whether it's the transfer station or any, any other entity in town, a light pole, what have you. Um, needs to go through you folks so you're aware of scope, you're aware of cost, you're aware of responsibility. And those things weren't clearly defined. And it's incumbent upon any board that is going to un undertake something to reach out to those other committees who it's going to affect. And that's the only thing this is meant to do to make sure that a project is fully vetted um, before it gets to the stage of needing funding or, or an approval, whether it be by the Board of Selectmen or the town or whoever else. But thank you for that, Jim. Uh, Bruce, did you want to jump in? Uh, <clears throat> sure. My two cents worth. The reason the green community exists is because the green community at the state level used to come in to visit with the uh, commissioners. And... Um, we decided that we should really have a green community in Rockport. And um, and I kind of took that and ran with that, came to the board at the time and the board agreed to it. And, uh, and because I was the one bringing it forward, I became the first chairman of the green community. So I know the amount of work that this committee does and it's, it's uh, pretty amazing, but there has to be some oversight of all these committees. And, and when I was chairman, it was easy for the DPW to have the knowledge of what was going on because I sat with Joe Parisi and we would discuss what the green community was doing. We would discuss 
that's what the DPW was trying to accomplish. I was able to say, you know what, Joe, that's something that the green community can pay for. And the town doesn't have to, it can be put out of a grant. So, you know, my thought is that this isn't onerous on the green community. It seems to me that this is just the way we should all be functioning. And, uh, you know, the communication has to go both ways. You know, maybe, you know, we ask questions, maybe we should ask them sooner in the process, as long as we know, but this doesn't look like a big change to me. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate it. Um, uh, anybody else? Larry, did you have anything you wanted to add? Um, I'll just, I, I had not reviewed the new charter. Um, just listening to, as you spoke, uh, I didn't see there was anything wrong with running like that. And it seems to cover, you know, government's complicated and people have different responsibilities. And, um, you know, you sort of have, and this is an unusual, one group promoting something but they don't really have any responsibility there. And then you have another group that's gonna, you know, end up um, with that responsibility when it happens. And, and it, you have to cover all those, all that, all of that. And, um, you know, just, we had the talk tonight about just the mattresses at the dump, <laughs> you know, which seems fairly simple unless you are the guy there looking at the mattress with the bed bugs in front of you. Yeah, right. You have to do with it. Um, so um, I didn't have any problem with, with what you said as the new charge. I, I thought it seemed like, you know, it seemed reasonable to me. You have a long-term plan. You ought to have those things. People, ought, everyone ought to know where, where you are on that plan and who's doing what. So I don't, I, I'm, I'm fine with what you suggest. Thank you, Larry. We appreciate the support. Um, as I said, I'm only everybody, mostly everybody from the green community has spoken. I will give Tom Micus the opportunity to speak if he wishes to. Um, is I know he was on the second page here. Uh, I don't see him. Just trying to understand where some change positions. No. Okay. So, he's, he's so there. is he here? He's, yep. He's unmuted. I'm here. Okay. Oh, good. Go ahead, Tom. Well, Don, th this afternoon was the first time that I or my team had seen this proposed charge. And apparently that applied to at least two of the three uh, DPW commissioners. So let me suggest that in the, in the name of improved collaboration and cooperation, we table this <laughs> now and have a conversation among DPW and my community task force and whoever else wants to join in, perhaps some BOS members and come up with something that meets everyone's needs and, and moves the town forward in the best way possible. There are some clear shortcomings with what, the way it's written. Uh, just to pick on a couple of little minor points, it, it doesn't successfully fulfill the town's obligations to the state green community program. We already maintain a five-year rolling energy reduction plan and this charge asks for a three-year plan. And it mentions nothing about our requirement to maintain the state database for all the municipal use of energy in Lockport, which we do. So there's some shortcomings and some things that I think could be improved. And I suggest that we table it and work together to come up with a, a better one. Thank you. I appreciate the comments, Tom. Um, any other comments from the board? Uh, yes, I, I agree with uh, uh, Tom Mikas as well. Uh, due, due to the fact that late uh, arrival of some of this information from the DP government, DPW commissioners and and other people uh, that we table it to our next meeting. Okay, the um, the DPW commissioners, if I heard correctly, unless I missed something, were in favor of this and didn't see this as onerous. And it's not meant to be that way. It's meant to be a spirit of cooperation. And I don't understand. I guess I'm having a hard time reconciling why. A, a, com a committee should want to charge ahead with something without informing the other committees that are affected by their decisions. So that's the, that's the reason for this. And even tonight, even uh, up until the last DPW commissioners meeting, there still seemed to be a, 
an air about it that said, well, we have meetings, you can come to them and you can read our minutes. Well, no, that's not how this is meant to work. That's not how this was meant to be. This was meant to be an open process where you folks find these initiatives, find these projects, <clears throat> pardon me, you vet them out, you talk to the local town, the local committees and boards, you get approvals or you get, you know, whatever you need in order to put all the pieces together. And then we present a, a unified package on these things. I, I got to tell you, I don't think there's any problem with getting anything on an agenda very, very quickly. If there are any issues for time, whether it be a grant or what have. You. So um, I would say that um, I think we should move forward with this. It's not onerous. It's not burdensome. And I think it's the right thing to do. And well, I think you'll find, as I found and, and admitted earlier, that the pay as you throw program um, was a very worthwhile endeavor after the fact, even though I opposed it at the onset. I think you'll find that these charge changes will help you and they will aid you in, in, in making your functionality uh, more streamlined and more precise and more accurate. So that's that's how I feel. Um, any other questions from the board, Herm, Ross? Oh, my, my comment would be that um, if the rolling period would change from three to five years, that takes away one of your objections. If we added to this the obligations that you have as a local green community task force to the state on and put that in as another proviso that you are to meet those obligations, does that then resolve the issues that you've raised? Same, Mr. Tom. Well, Herm, I, these are just off the top of my head. This is the first we've seen it. We've not had a team meeting to discuss this, and I think that would be the best way to do it, putting our heads together and saying what's the best way to fulfill our obligations and add whatever additional value we can to the town. So I, and I, I let me push back. I, I, uh, I object to Chairman Campbell's ascribing motives to us and putting words in our mouths. I never, I never did any such thing. I, I, what, I never did any such thing. And let's stop this nonsense, Tom. Let, let, let's stop this nonsense. I'm not, I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to have it. I'm just not going to do it. So you can try to ascribe anything you want to me, and I'm sure that you'll get all of your folks together, and you'll have some sort of a, a meeting, and you're going to try. There'll be a campaign against me. That's fine. I'll take it. no problem. I'm okay with that. But I'm telling you that what I'm doing is for no personal motives, or what we're doing as a board is for no personal motives. This is to protect the town. We went from a $6,000 streetlight project to a $350,000 streetlight project. And everybody was, and I'll use the term, in the dark. These things can't happen. We have to make sure that we fully vet and we have, we, everybody knows what's going on and who's responsible. If, that, if, if you talking to another committee, Tom, is so burdensome and so onerous and such a detriment, then you'll have to make decisions that you'll have to make. Again, I'm, I'm ascribing my intention. I'm, I'm not. I'm not ascribing anything. I'm presenting an option. I don't ascribe. I present options. So let's be, be clear on that. I, as I'm not a doctor, I just so you're clear, I'm not ascribing anything to you. You just told me what I thought was onerous. You don't know what I think. No, I, no that's not. I didn't say what that. I what I said was, if you think it is, then you'll have to make some decisions. I did not ascribe it to you. Let's be correct in our, in our terminology. Why are you so, so aggressive with me, Don? So with that said, um, Monty, can you please mute Mr. Micus, if you don't mind, please? If you can't, listen. Thank you. Um, so with that said, that's okay. I, I, I will take any of the any of the pitfalls. Chair, if I may. Not a problem. Yes, please, Ross. Just, just so we're clear, this is the first, we've seen for the first time, most of selectmen have seen this for the first time this afternoon as well. And this is why we're having the meeting as a selectman do set the charge. And That's I correct. also back, I think it was on the 13th, I reached out to the chair of the Green Community Task Force and asked them to ask the members if they have the input that I could bring forward in this meeting. And I didn't receive anything back except for an old um, template that they had originally, I think when he first got on the board was the uh, a charge they were gonna recommend. I don't know where it went from there. But I, I did, you know, when people were saying put in the dark, I did reach out and I did ask him to ask the members, I believe so. I don't, I don't like to remember the exact email to if they had any input with right. current charge. Because at the time, I didn't know what the charge was either. Right. And we, and we, and we all had, we all, exactly, Russ. And we all had to review it 
to take a look at it. And again, the changes that were made are not burdensome changes. It's simply talk to another committee and, and tell them what's going on. It's pretty much as simple as that. Um, Paul, you had your hand up? Yeah, yeah. I, I was just saying, you know, I, I'm not opposed. I, I, I'm, I'm listening to uh, this and I read. I also read it uh, uh, late this afternoon. Uh, what, what, uh, why, don't, why don't we just hold off to next meeting and let people calm down and, and everyone can read the, 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 the changes and so forth and people can uh, uh, make a decision. I, I, I don't think it's anything uh, time sensitive. We can do it two weeks from now. That would be my suggestion. Thank you. Herm? Well, my proposal is as I suggested. In other words, change three years to five years if that is consistent with the state policy. Add to it that the local um, Green Community Task Force has an obligation to, in fact, um, meet the guidelines of the state. That doesn't change the reporting in this suggested revision because it's really a reporting. It's not really what you do and what you don't do other than the way you report. Tell us what you're up to, report it to us, let us know and put it on paper. Those are not um, difficult tasks. Those are the kinds of responsibilities that any committee in my experience has to a senior committee. So therefore, I'm not opposed. If, if those additions are made to this, um, this particular update in charge. I have no particular problem with voting on it right now because I don't see anything in there that is going to um, create a problem for them. And if it does, then, then, then I have a problem. So anyway. Okay. So, so we're clear on this, Herm, because it sounds like there may be an amendment coming. You want to change the plan should be for a rolling three year period to a rolling five year period? Is that yes, correct? Yes, because because we have been informed by Tom that that is the the way the state document is is drafted. The state guidelines are drafted. That's my understanding. Okay, is that in fact the case, Mitch? Do you know that? I believe it is five years, as uh, Mr. Mikas has indicated. Okay, good. Then I have I have no problem with that. So we can change that. And I don't. I would think maybe a three year plan helps you a little bit more. But I'm fine with five year. I don't really care. That works for me. So we can change that. And Herm, what was your second suggestion? And the change? other is if if there are other obligations that they have to the state, then they should comply with those obligations. That should be a fourth point. That they are or, or it should be the third point. Then the fourth point should be the last. Uh, the now third point should be the last, um, but that um, they should uh, comply with all obligations that they have um, to the state green community. Does that, Mitch, does that change so, anything? Does that, how does that work with, so with just, what we have? So I just need, if Selectman Lilia wants to make an amendment, I just need him to say what he wants it to say so we can record it. Okay, yep, I, would that's like fine. To, I would like to amend the charge to change the three-year uh, rolling plan to a five-year rolling plan. And I would like to add that obligations that the local Green Community Task Force has to the state, given the guidelines of the state, that they are certainly encouraged. In fact, they're expected to complete those obligations. I'll second that. Okay. Um, do we have that language correct? So I guess the wording of that last point is what it, that was. It was a great explanation, but I think we need to take that and boil it down into what you actually want the language to say. So w with just a sentence or two, Herm, can you put that together real quick? <laughs> the Green Community Task Force, the Robert Green Community Task Force is expected to meet all obligations that are part of its charge from the state green community task force. Okay. Okay. Um, does, Rich, does that work within everything else? Do we have any so, issues here? I want to make sure we're, no, we're not contradictory. So there's not, um, there's not a state green communities task force. It's a green, it's the green communities program Fine. managed by the state. Then, then, then so insert. Okay. Um, so I'm just going to read back 
what I'm what I've boiled down, I think, to what I believe you said, Selectman Lilia. So please okay. correct me. Right. Meet, meet obligations under the state green communities program. Meeting the obligations under the state green communities program will be fulfilled by the task force. Is that is that what you? Yes, that is that. Then that then becomes an expectation by virtue of being a charge. Oh, okay. Is that right? If you put it in as such, it's part of their charge. So then it becomes an expectation. Okay, I just want to make sure that I've got what your amendment is here. Um, meeting. Okay, so um, Selectman Lilia, I have for your uh, amendment change through rolling three year to rolling five year and inserting bullet number three as meeting obligations under the state green communities program will be fulfilled by the task force. Is that correct? Is that what you, is that what your motion that's, is? That's what I'm indicating, yes, that's correct. Okay. And the other change, Mitch, is the change the three year period to a five year period. He mentioned that, yeah. Yep, okay, so we're good. So is everybody clear on the motion the way it stands now? I honestly think we've, we've gotten too far away from it now. I, and I'm, I'm kind of starting with uh, Selectman Murphy now because I'm, I'm confused now because I'm, I'm not seeing it in front of me. Well, so, there, were two, there were two things that were added in. One, the five-year charge, and one that they have to comply with the state mandates of the Green Community Initiative. Other than that, everything else stands. So what what is what's confusing about it? Maybe we can clear it up because, because I, I don't know what the because now that we're bringing up this the state level one, I would like to go back and read that personally. Um, I, th I think I, I I continue to suggest it. But I, I know I mean I think this I like the charge you know and I'll second my invitation to uh, Chairman Micus to have his members make recommendations if they have any that could possibly still be there. But I still think this charge covers all the ground, but I don't like the confusion we've had during this discussion to move forward with this charge at this time. Okay. All right, so we there's a motion on the floor, so we would have to vote on the motion because there was one on, there is one on the floor, correct? Only if there's a second, there has not been a second yet. Has there been a second? Because we have been updated. I so signed no, a second to the motion. You made the motion, so you can't because you changed. No, no I didn't. Oh, you mean the amendments? The amendments, correct. Uh, correct. Yes. Okay. So we're going to wait on. You want to wait on this? Is that is that what I'm sensing from Paul and from Ross? Uh, Herm? Absolutely. Well, I can't. I can't second my own amendment. No, no, I'm not asking to second. I'm. I just. I'm asking. Um, do you want to put this off until our next meeting? Yes. No, that was I know you do, Paul, but I'm asking her. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. I see the next rendition of this as being a more complicated rendition than what we have right here, which I see as being very straightforward. And um, if the board is so inclined to put it off, then I certainly my commentary is uh, <laughs> not, not being persuasive. And um, if, if that's what the board wants, then the board can put it off when we talk. But I don't see I don't see this charge as being um, simplified in any way. I see it as becoming more complex, which is what um, the Selectman Ross has already indicated he thinks this is. Um, but um, is there a curiosity as to what those particular tenants are from the umbrella guidelines from the state. Um, sure, I, there is a curiosity on my part because I don't have them in front of me. Um, but then again, um, they've been operating under those guidelines and the assumption is that those are not guidelines that we would find um, overwhelming. Yeah, I would expect them to be um, rather straightforward, but um, I don't see the charges becoming more as, uh, simplified after this discussion, that's all I'll say. I got it. It, it might not even change for all, for all I know. I would, but like I said, I had asked for input. You know, I've learned something different now. I would like to go and review it myself before I make a final decision. You that's know, fine. I didn't know how high into the state this went. So, you nope. know. And, and I'm with you on that. I have my own curiosity. 
Okay. So Ross, you're going to take a look at that and see um, where that, where that, what you'll you get the information report back to the board. Is that correct? Yeah. If you'd like me to. Yeah, please. If you would, that'd be great. Okay, good. So moving on, we will go to. Uh, does this void? Does this void the first motion when the amendment gets declined? Did the first? I don't think the first, the first one got second. The first one did get seconded, I believe. The motion was seconded. I seconded the motion. Uh -huh. You for seconded the, the for the, the sake of discussion. In other words, that's that's the reason why you second the motion. Yep, the that's, no, that's fine. And so, that's exactly what we did. That's right. So um, we've had discussion now. Um, there can be a motion to table this particular motion. But we'd have to vote on the motion as presented. So unless the floor. So yeah, the motion Chairman, on the floor. You please I, go I ahead, would, Mitch. I would recommend at this point that if the intention is as, as has been stated by the majority that they not act on it tonight, there's a motion pending to approve or not that, you, that if that is still the board's intention that you'd vote no on the motion as it stands, which will stop the discussion on it and, and it'll send it forward to the next meeting. Okay, good. All right, so there, so there is a motion. It's been made and seconded. Um, it's on the original motion that we talked about, the original as written that everybody got in their packet. Um, so based upon that, is there further discussion on that? Hearing none, roll call vote. Selectman Brack? No. Selectman Murphy? No. Selectman Lilia? No. Selectman Campbell votes no. Motion carries 4-0. And we will take this up at the next meeting. Thank you. Good discussion. Very good discussion. A lot of thoughtful input on that. Thank you, folks. Okay. Uh, let's move on to, uh, again, we're going to skip H tonight because we wanted Sarah to be in on this. And she is going to be reporting back um, with uh, after, on her conversation with Denise Donnelly and some others. So that would be great. We move on to I, Board of Selectmen and Town Administrator Updates. Um, Mitch, we'll start it with you and you can take care of both of those items on there, the budget and COVID-19, please. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as the board is aware, uh, we're, we are moving forward with uh, our preparations and recommendations on the operating budget. Um, the board uh, will be meeting next Tuesday in a joint session with the Finance Committee for your annual budget review with the departments, um, particularly the, the, the big five departments who uh, are responsible for approximately 80 to 85 percent of the operating budget. We are prepared for that. And then um, the same week, we are prepared to move forward, as previously discussed, with um, the first of its kind uh, public hearing associated with the operating budget. Um, so more details and, and, and uh, some postings will be out on that in the next day or so. Uh, but we are prepared to um, uh, move forward with it. Uh, the finance director and I are um, finalizing our uh, recommendations and we'll have those for the board's consideration at your uh, next meeting. Uh, so all is um, on target there. Uh, we did receive our free cash numbers. Uh, they were very healthy free cash numbers. We're very pleased with those for general fund and for uh, water enterprise and, and uh, wastewater sewer enterprise, uh, retained the earnings for those two accounts. Um, so we'll be getting the uh, CIPC together, uh, hopefully uh, either later this week or the start of next to uh, finalize some recommendations now that we know what our free cash numbers are. Um, so we are uh, in, in good shape in preparing the necessary materials for you for, the, uh, for your consideration of the operating and capital budgets. Uh, relating to COVID-19, uh, pursuant to the board's vote at, I believe your last meeting, uh, relating to the um, release of funds uh, from the local fiscal recovery uh, account, we have placed an order for uh, COVID home tests, uh, which once received will be uh, distributed to the community so that we can ensure that we have that. Uh, and we're providing tests to uh, the residents in the community. And then after that, uh, remaining tests to our employees. So we are awaiting those. The order is in, the order has been confirmed. Um, as you'd expect, we are uh, in line with all of the other municipalities uh, from not only Massachusetts, but across the country. Uh, and we're also certainly, you know, uh, it, it's a competitive process to get the materials now. So we're in the queue. We have a confirmed order and accepted purchase order. And as soon as those are in uh, and we have them in hand, we will make uh, public announcements on the uh, disbursement of those tests uh, to the community at large, um, which we hope is in the very near future. Uh, but we won't release the date or, or set a date 
until we can actually we actually have the tests in hand so that we don't raise expectations on that. But we have ordered them. The order's confirmed. We're just waiting to receive. Uh, so we are moving forward on that uh, item. So that's what I have uh, for you this evening, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mitch. I appreciate that. Um, I will go to other members of the board uh, for updates. Anybody? Herm, please. Sure. Um, I'll give you a So I, I listened um, to the, to the um, yes, the committee preservation uh, commission this afternoon. Um, and I should say that the uh, current hierarchy uh, or past hierarchy has been reconfirmed for the next year. Mr. Crody and Ms. Datastelli and Mr. Michaels have been reappointed. Uh, the Sustainable Housing Group requested funds to the tune of $9,000 from the, um, the uh, committee to, in fact, um, go about establishing this housing trust. They would like to put in 10 units by uh, 2025 uh, with preference to Cape Ann residents. Um, if they do that, uh, if it were only Cape Ann residents, they could only have 70% of it um, with regard to that kind of a housing arrangement. Um, they want owners of houses and land to come to the group. They um, would like to have private deals with them. It'll be a nonprofit 501c3. It'll be for affordable housing, existing trusts that um, exist within Massachusetts are being and elsewhere are being used as examples. They want to hire a consultant. They want a land use arrangement, so-called, with these different property owners. Now, they want to own the property, as I understand it, not the house, so they can control the property. There is an individual in Boston they've identified that they want to come as a consultant and help them um, set up this. Um, so that was all very useful. The uh, Milbert Meadow Commission um, has some concerns about the stairway, which is now being described and probably always was as a spillway and whether or not they can put stairs, uh, a handrail on that spillway, which then makes it stairs and then it has to conform perhaps to ADA. So there are uh, problems associated with that. Um, there are probably some other points that I could bring out, but um, it was useful to go and uh, listen to the different commentary. So thank you. Thanks for the update, Arm. Appreciate it. Um, Selectman Brackett, any updates? Nope. Nope. Selectman Murphy? I'm good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. All right. Very good. Um, so that concludes that section. Now we will move on to our last section, public comment. Um, if you wish to speak, please use the hand raise function and we will call on you. Um, uh, Jerry Sharfstein, there you go. Um, Monty, if you could unmute Jerry, please. Name and address for the record, please. My name is Jerry Sharfstein. I live at 2A Twin Lake Circle. Uh, I hope that my comments are not asked to be cut off because you may disagree with me. I am shocked and disappointed, and I hope everyone pays attention to what was said by Chairman Campbell during this discussion, that a person be disconnected from the call. It was suggested, I don't know if he suggested it, but because that person was disagreeing with him, he was asked to be removed from the call. I thought that was totally inappropriate and does not make for a dialogue that Mr. Campbell so wholeheartedly wants to have with the community. In addition to that, Mr. Campbell has suggested that he expects a good dialogue between the green community and, and the board and that things be submitted so that people have an opportunity to review it. How can you say that with a straight face when you presented that information to the green community only hours before this meeting? Totally inappropriate. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Jerry. I appreciate it. Um, let's go to Toby, if you for could, one, please, one Mark. second, Mr. Chair. I just want to make one thing clear. Tom yes. Lewis was not removed from the call. He was simply muted at the direction of the chair, which the chair controls the public comments of the meeting. So he was not removed from the meeting. He's still in the meeting. I just want to make sure that's clear for the selections we have. Thank you, Ross. Um, Toby. 
Uh, am I on? You are now, Toby. Go ahead, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, in the uh, course of the uh, Community Development Commission meeting, uh, both Herman Lilla and Denise Donnelly uh, spoke about uh, the Affordable Housing Trust, the existing one that is now in the bylaws that you're considering uh, removing, and both spoke of the board removing uh, the trust from the bylaws. But that, as you should well know, is not factual, not how it works. You can't simply remove it. Uh, you would make a recommendation uh, to the town meeting, which would have to vote to remove it, uh, just as you, the board, uh, along uh, with the planning board, recommended the town meeting adopt it. It's the way, same way uh, that it got there is the same way that it would come out. And during the course of that discussion also, uh, Denise Donnelly said that if we activated the trust, that any vote to spend money on affordable housing would be handicapped because uh, it would have to go before a town meeting. Uh, that is, again, not factual, not accurate. Uh, money could be given to the Affordable Housing Trust, just as now it will be proposed, it's given to the group uh, that uh, would be dreamed up, uh, doesn't yet exist, uh, through community preservation grants, just as money is given to the Conservation Commission for them to spend on land. And once the Conservation Commission is given the money, they can spend it. It would be the exact same process uh, with either the group that uh, Denise and Sarah are dreaming up or uh, the uh, Rockport Affordable Housing Trust that already exists in the bylaws. So when we discuss these things, I hope we'll stick to facts. It seems not. And the statement that was passed over just mentioned by Herman Lilia uh, that the proposed trust, the one that's being dreamed up, uh, would own the land uh, and the people who got the affordable housing would own the buildings is the exact model of Long Beach. And you're all painfully aware of what a nightmare that is. And it has another uh, huge drawback from the town's standpoint, and that is that uh, if the town owns the land or the trust, which is not for profit, owns the land, then it's off the tax rate. And none of it makes any sense. Why would, as I said, you would reinvent the wheel when there are perfectly good outfits already out there uh, with track records and, oh, one final comment. They wish to hire a consultant. Uh, Mel Michaels asked the, the, uh, the, the proper question at the community preservation, pointing out that you can't uh, use the administrative funds to hire consultants. Uh, Please add to my list of questions for town council. What exactly are they going to spend the 9950 on if it's not for a consultant? I want to know. And I want to know if that was a legal vote. I don't believe it was. Thank you, Toby. Appreciate it. Herm, you, have, so you want to add I something? One quick question. I, Toby um, referenced my comments at the end of the CPC committee, just as he referenced them here. I did not say that we were going to vote to, to uh, disregard the trust that was created in 2017 at town meeting. I never said that, Toby. I said, I did not, you asked me whether or not there was gonna be a vote tonight. And my question was, I did not know. But that was not to say that I was in favor of it, not in favor of it, it could be or it couldn't be, but please don't perpetuate the statement that I said it was, or and it could be done in that way. Thank you. Thanks, Sharon, appreciate that. Um, any other here? I see uh, Joe, Joe Ruckheiser. Um, Monty, if you could unmute Joe, that would be great, please. Yeah, where's Joe, where's Joe? My screen bottom left. It's Joseph, just to be. Yep, Joseph Ruckheiser. Hang on, Joe, one second, we'll get you. Joe, keep I your hand up, there you go. There you go, good, you. go ahead, you're unmuted. Thank you. Um, I just want to speak to the issue. Hey, about, and just Joe, real quick, name and address for the record, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's OK. Uh, Joe Rukeyser, 1 Martha's Lane, Rockport. Uh, I want to speak to the issue of process uh, for just a moment. Um, I've been chair of quite a few committees. And um, uh, I just want to say that uh, looking at parliamentary procedure, looking at Robert's Rules of Order, uh, unless you have 
a bylaw statement that contradicts this. The bylaw, the uh, Roberts rules say the chairman or whatever title uh, the presiding officer is called should not speak in debate to maintain the impartiality required of this position. This also means that the chair should not interrupt a speaker so long as that person is following the rules of the group. I think it's really important for you to follow that kind of uh, process and not have the chair interrupt anyone or actually participate in any part of the debate unless your bylaws specifically permit that. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, Eric Hutchins, please. Yeah, thank you. This is Eric Hutchins, um, 45 Fools Lane. Just a brief comment. I, I was a little taken back by this evening's meeting. And, and almost independent of the board to boards just discussions this evening, dealing with the Green Committee, I don't care what the committee was, anyone, whether it's anyone I'm ever on or ever will be in the future, when it was quite clear that the Board of Selectmen only learned about this this evening, this afternoon, the, the language, the DPW members came right out and said it in a public videotape that they only heard about it today. And the committee that is working their butt off just simply said, can you give us time to review this and com communicate with you on it? When you said the purpose was communication and collaboration, that's not a way to treat any committee, independent of the issue. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Anybody else for public comment? Nope. Uh, Monica Lawton, Monica and Laura Kozicek. Monica, you've been unmuted. Yes, thank you. I, I agree with uh, Eric and I, I uh, appreciate that the selectmen tabled this because nothing was that urgent that needed to be decided tonight. I think most items that come to the, the selectmen at a meeting have had have been vetted, vetted before they come to a meeting. And it, it, it is just only reasonable that something that clearly is as, as uh, has turned out to be as contentious, whether it should be or shouldn't be, but clearly it is. And it really deserves uh, more time in advance of coming to an agenda for a discussion and a vote. And tabling it was the proper thing to do in this instance. And uh, I appreciate you doing that. Thank you, Monica. Um, just so people are clear, every every um, open meeting law, every uh, protocol was followed. There was nothing that was sprung at the last minute. Um, everybody knew about this at the time that we got it. There was there was nothing that was uh, that was a surprise to anybody. Um, it was on the agenda, which people saw, and then the final language was given today. Um, Selectman Lilia offered some amendments to that. It was pretty simple. It, it wasn't. Um, it wasn't the, uh, the 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 veil of secrecy that people are trying to make it out to be. So that's that. Um, Laura Kozicek, please. Monty, could, uh, I think you're, you're unmuted, Laura. Go yes, ahead. I I am. Thank you um, for accepting more comments at the end. I would also. Uh, agree with um, Eric and with Monica, and there was nothing that was really in a hurry tonight. And these things need to be done reflectively, and um, and conduct does need to be respectful. And that is um, something that I believe this community is going to be really looking very closely at the Board of Select people for individually and collectively on that as we go forward. Um, I'd like to mention that when you do your um, communications, uh, figuring out about how the Green Community Task Force is to go forward in their charter, whether it is uh, renewed or um, changed or exchanged in any way, that you need to uh, know that if every single thing has to be passed by through a process that is gonna move like molasses in January, then the competitive grants that they apply for will not be available to this community. If you are going to enforce some bogus things that are based on ego, 
because you're uncomfortable with climate change or any of the things that Laura, no, no, hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to slow. I am going to interrupt I'm you for a second. I'm almost done. I, I, no, I, I get it. And I will let, I will let I'd you like finish. To finish my but sentence. you're ascribing that to me. Now that's I what am Tom talking, was talking about, about anybody who would be disrespectful and who would not be listening right now. And that, yes, yeah. would include you right now. Um, but I, I would like you to reflect on what the Green Community Task Force actually does, how they have affected the infrastructure on town buildings, such as the library, and have saved from what my quick estimate in my head is gotta be somewhere between seven and eight hundred thousand dollars which they do easily and swiftly based on their research and their tenacity. So if Mitch Vieira has got nothing but time to entertain all of these different things that go on, which I believe he does not, and if the board of select people want to meet more often so that they can take on these other roles, then you should write that in and that should be a part of it. But I just wanted to mention the time it takes to do the things that they do in a timely fashion. Thank you. Thank you. The, see, the problem that I have with this is, is that I am very respectful of what the Green Community Task Force does and what they accomplish for this town. Money savings, uh, 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 resource savings. I'm, I'm, I'm on board with all of that. My, my feelings on climate don't play into that side. What the Green Community Task Force does, I applaud. However, I am not, I cannot in good conscience sit here and just say they should do whatever they want unfettered without having to go to any other boards or committees in order to make sure that these projects are paid for, are properly administered, and have the right oversight over them by the boards and committees they affect. So green community, listen, let me say this clearly. You guys are great. I'm not gonna dispute that at all. You do great work for this town, but I will not, as chair, until May 10th, I will not let the green community task force just run willy nilly and do whatever they want and feel like they don't have to be accountable to anybody. Then you folks need to go to the boards and committees in town that are affected by your decision. And if you don't like that, I don't know what to say from there. It's just the right thing to do for the town. So with that said, is I mean, there Mr. any, what, is the, I'm sorry, Ro, uh, Ross, <laughs> did you have some? Yeah, yeah I please. just want to say that again, this wasn't hidden. Okay. Like I said, we've seen it. This, we start for the first time this afternoon. I did reach out to the chair for input and on the side of, you know, certain things happening, for instance, the $350,000 that came up was not never discussed. So obviously that's going to, Kind of, we're going to question that, and I've asked multiple times the numbers for it on what where the breakdown in breakdown is on where it's come from. I haven't. Oh, the board's asked that. DPW's asked that. We haven't received anything yet on where those comes from. I've heard they have the numbers. I haven't seen it yet, but still, when a number like that just gets thrown out there in an email saying, "Oh, we're going to need this for the streetlights," when originally the original plan was fifteen thousand, somewhere around that range, it's kind of okay. Well, something something's missing that we didn't hear. So that, that's just where I, we're coming I, from. It's I would call upsetting. it a lack of communication, Ross, is what I would it's call it. It's just upsetting that people are trying to say we're, we're trying to. The charge that was presented was a good charge. I just, the confusion in the, in the discussion that made me question myself and going forward with it. That's the only reason. At no point does this new charge hinder them in any way. You know, you guys it want us doesn't. to go have a, an open session meeting with them. That's going to prolong the. The discussion you know if you want to have molasses because now we got to wait set up another meeting for them just to discuss about a charge that the selectmen are the people that set the charge in the first place we just made an edc a new edc charge last year at no point did we have all these different committees come in and have input we set the charge and that was it i asked for input from certain people they got back to me i haven't got back from anyone from the green community task force when i asked uh five days ago i think i'm not sure what the date is so Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Appreciate it. Uh, Paul? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I to uh, echo uh, Selectman uh, Brackett, I agree. And that this is a perfect example why we ought to put, put this off to the next meeting. Uh, we'll get everything all, all straightened out. Uh, cooler heads will prevail. Not that it's been an awful uh, discussion or anything like that. But uh, I, that's why I, I strongly su suggest that we 
and I'm glad we're going to put it off to uh, uh, our next meeting. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate that. Uh, Herm, any closing thoughts? No, it, it's um, it's been, it, as far as I'm concerned, a productive meeting. So therefore, yeah. I uh, don't have any regrets. And um, so we'll meet again. And uh, the points will have been sent in one way or another. And my hope is that uh, the original charge was, in fact, um, bare bones. The ones that was proposed was only slightly more um, elaborate. And my hope is that we don't get into a situation where we're trying to um, cover every single um, point no. that could possibly be included. Right. No. And, we, we, and, we and I agree move, with you. We need to move forward next meeting. Right. I agree. I agree. And you, you make all, you make all, nothing was meant to be burdensome, but that's beside the point. Okay. Um, we have an executive session scheduled for tonight. Mr. Um, Chair, there's one more public comment. Oh, I, I didn't see. Who is good. it? I don't see it. Uh, Diane Finch. There it is. I see it's on another page. Go ahead, Diane. Yeah. Um, thank you for letting me speak one more time. No problem. Um, I just want to clarify this 300,000 that people keep talking about. Um, the group, and again, I don't include me because I'm too new on this committee, but they work so hard to get grants and they did get one grant to, to install LED lights in Rockport all over the town. Um, and it, we would have saved the community 300,000 to do that. And then after that, the electric cost would go down precipitously. But one point that Don Campbell and everyone else needs to think about is it takes a ton of work to meet deadlines for grants, a ton of work. And if you introduce something that slows that down, we're not gonna get the grants. And the green community, the state guidelines are probably a little more complicated than you think. And I would suggest that all of the selectmen read the green community state guidelines because there are things on there that we're actually not following that the green community doesn't even have time to look at um, related to building codes and such. In order to maintain status as a green community by the state, you have to do things by certain dates. And we've been meeting those guidelines, the databases that have to be updated, that's a lot of work. And what comes from those databases, we find out how Rockport is doing in terms of conserving energy. We just got all that data. And I'm putting together uh, notes on that. We've dropped energy in Rockport by 17% between the green community and, and any work DPW has done. So there's a whole lot to this that can't just be suddenly changed with new bureaucracy and new oversight because it'll slow everything down. I'm really glad that Ross and Paul thought about that and came up with this idea to postpone because I think that like Don Campbell is saying about communications, we did hear that you were asking about our charge and we all agreed with the charge we had and we were hoping to meet with you and talk about even adding a little bit more work on us, us volunteers. Um, and in terms of the DPW and not knowing about this ahead of time, I'm, I'm shocked by that. This charge as written up is a big change. And I think the public needs to see it written out and see the difference. So, but please don't say we lost $300,000. We almost got $300,000 for a beautiful project with beautiful LED lights for Rockport that will also be shown to citizens so they can decide which luminosity they like. Diane, so, if I could just have you wrap it up, I'm sorry. I I'll wrap it up now. We got, this committee got brought in a lot of benefits to Rockport and you're picking on a few minor things where communications were bad. This committee, this BOS tonight was one of the worst forms of communications I've seen. So I really hope that you'll work with our whole group, the Green Community Task Force and all the Board of Selectmen together. And let's talk about how it really works. Thank you, Diane. I appreciate the comments. Thank you. Um, one of the things that I do want to make clear is that regardless of what grants are available, the expediency of obtaining a grant doesn't doesn't negate the burden that is placed upon 
what comes along with that grant, whether it's a matching grant, whether it is a buy-in from the town. So I, again, I, I, and I'll say it and I mean it, I appreciate the work the Green Community Task Force does. You just need to talk to the other boards and committees in town. It's as simple as that. And I just don't understand what the pushback is on this and why people are so unwilling to want to do that. It just is, it's beyond me why that, why that's something that is like that, but that's okay. That's, that's uh, neither here nor there. Uh, my, is there anybody else? I, Diane still has a hand up, but I'm, I'm all set with that. Is there anybody else that has a comment? Otherwise we have to move on here. We have an executive session to get to. Okay. Uh, hearing none, is there a motion for executive session? I do, Mr. Chair. I move that the board enter into executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3 to discuss strategies with respect to litigation if an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigation position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21 a three to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee versus Town of Rockport United States District Court, CA number one two zero CV one one two seven four, NMG. If an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body, and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to General Law Chapter thirty A Section twenty one A three to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee versus Town of Rockport Land Court, CA number 21 MISC 000174, if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3 to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding Back Beach Neighbors Committee First Town of Rockport, Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177-CV-000364. An open meeting may have detrimental effect on the lit litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. Executive session pursuant to uh, Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, Subsection 3, to discuss strategies with respect to threatening potential litigation if an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigating position of the town and the chair so declares subsection seven for the purpose of complying for, with all general and special law, specifically general law chapter 214, section one B, right to privacy. Executive session pursuant to general law chapter 30A, subsection 21A3 to discuss strategy with respect to lit litigation regarding James Doyle versus town of Rockport et al. United States federal court number 121, CV 11015 LTS. If an open meeting may have detrimental effects on a litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, folks may be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategies with respect to litiga litigation regarding Sepulveda versus Town of Rockport et al., Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177CV010060. If an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, vote to be taken. Executive session pursuant to general law, chapter 30A, section 21A3, to discuss strategies with respect to litigation regarding Glenn McLeod et al. versus Town of Rockport et al., Essex Superior Court, docket number 2177CV00077. If an open meeting may have detrimental effect on the litigating position of the public body and the chair so declares, votes may be taken. The board will not reconvene in a public session. Thank you, Ross. Is there a second? Thank you. Second. Motions made and seconded. The chair so declares that by not entering into executive session that it would be detrimental to the town's litigating position. We will not reconvene in open session. Um, roll call vote. Selectman Brackett. Aye. Selectman Murphy. Aye. Selectman Lilia. Aye. Selectman Campbell votes aye. Motion carries 5-0. For those left here, and I hope you tell your friends, I appreciate everything that was said here tonight, regardless. I honestly do. I can take criticism. I will. I have no problem. As a matter of fact, it's already started on Rockport stuff. So have at it and let the games begin. But thank you, everybody. And now we're going into executive session. Have a great night. At this time, the Board of Selectmen has ended the public portion of the meeting. We ask that you please exit the meeting at this time.